Hello and welcome to a rather late episode 153 of the Mouse's Makes Knitting Podcast. My name is Mandy, sometimes known as Mouse, and I have been missing for two whole weeks. I'm very sorry, but I couldn't talk without coughing and I had conjunctivitis and I was just like frightening to look at, even more so than normal. And my eyes were puffy and I'm not going to go into all the, the gross details, but I'm feeling much better now. My eyes are almost back to normal. So here I am. With not being feeling very well, I haven't done a lot of knitting. And what I have done has mostly been blankets because that's all I had the brain space for, really. But I've got a lot to show you nonetheless and at the end I'll be, shop update is this coming weekend so I'll be showing you what's going into the shop update. So I'm going to leave that till the very end so if you don't want to see that you don't have to watch it. Right, first things first, it is October. I am in my pumpkin t-shirt, I have got my coffee in my pumpkin mug. October is my happy place. So, where shall I start with knitting these stuff? I'm going to start with something that I drew out of my pot four weeks ago. It's not this. This, this is an abandoned shawl. I can't remember what it's called. It was a Stephen West shawl that I was making and I just decided I didn't like it. I don't know why now, looking at it. I quite like it now. But anyway, I stopped knitting it and this has now become the shawl that I put on the chair because Ewan's cat Rocket has taken to sleeping on my chair. Now Poppy's not here. Um, and he's pulling threads in my nice knitted blanket but he likes the wool to sleep on so this is now Rocket's blanket I just need to slip it back onto the needles and cast that off before it unravels anymore that's not something I've been working on you didn't need to know about any of that this is the Lumi cowl and this is the thing that I pulled out of my pot random bags take with me to the southern wool show it is chaos in here i've had to be very careful with what you can see because i'm surrounded by advent stuff and all the stuff i've got out to do the podcast if there's a fire i'm not getting out let's just put it that way ewan's home he was out but now he's home which is just as well because if the doorbell rings i'm not getting out for that either now the sun's come out it's going to go in, in again in a minute. It's all thick black clouds out there. I'm not messing with the blind. Right. <sighs> Concentrate, Mandy. Lumi Cowl. Took with me to the Southern Wall show. Did barely any knitting while I was there. Um, but what I did do, I think I've got to pull back. Let me show you. Um... Oh, I've done more than I thought. The pattern tells you to go up a needle size for the colour work and I never do that. I never have done that. But for some bizarre reason I decided on this occasion I would do that and it's messed it up. My tension clearly works best without me doing that. So the first few rows, I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell, are all cobbled up. Here... I change needles and the rest is fine. If I show you the back, you can probably see it better on the back. Can you see how this bit... No, not really. Can you see how it's all like pulled tight and that's no good. So I've not gone any further with this. I've been trying to convince myself that it will block out. And it might. So 
before I pull it back I'm going to give it a little steam block and see if if it is going to block out if it's not I'm going to have to pull it back and redo it because it's just going to ruin the whole thing and that's a lesson to me not to you know what's that saying if it ain't broke don't fix it I don't know why why all the colour work I've ever done in my life and I suddenly decided that I would go up a needle size and it doesn't work for me because obviously my tension is adjusted for the fact that I don't. So that's annoying. Um, I'm trying to find the... I know there was a progress keeper on here but I can't find it. Maybe it fell off. Maybe I took it off in disgust. I might have done. Anyway. There's that much done and possibly about to be undone, which is a shame. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to try the little steam block, see how that goes. If it doesn't work, well then I'm just going to have to pull it back. And it serves me right. So that's all I had from before. The other thing that I mentioned that I have done is I finished a rocket tee that I wore to the Southern Wool Show knit in a yarn mixology yarn cake and I said I was going to take the I cord edge off and put a ribbed bottom on and I've done that but I haven't bothered to bring it to show you. Okay. Then because I wasn't feeling very well and I was just... I didn't have much brain space for anything really. I've been so, so tired. It appears I've had COVID again. Um, but it, it, apart from the cough, it wasn't the same as when I had COVID before. So I'm not sure. I didn't bother and test because I wasn't going anywhere and there wasn't any point really. So... I spoke to the pharmacist because I had conjunctivitis and apparently the latest strain that's going around has a high incidence of causing conjunctivitis. So that's what we're basing it on. Again, this is not information that you needed. OK, so I got on with some crochet because that was easy and didn't require much thinking about. These are the squares that I'm making for my blanket. Um, that I'm planning to put together in January. Five squares of Mouse Witch Yarn Mystery Mini Club and five squares of Yarn Unique Mystery Mini Club each month. And I hadn't done the August ones yet. So these are the August squares. This was the Yarn Unique um, inspiration photo. It's upside down. It's lifting the veil and these there's the door is she even getting in I hope so I hope so because it might be something very important that's being delivered that I'll tell you about later so these are the August yarn unique squares. I don't think he's opened the door. Let me pause. I'm back. I've returned with biscuits to go with my coffee when I finish doing this. Ewan is down there but he's got his earbuds in so even though he stood right next to the front door he didn't hear it go. Let me catch my breath. It's worth going though, because I've had a parcel from my friend Sue. Thank you, Sue. I haven't opened it yet. I will be a good girl. Okay. Let me just breathe. I forgot I can't do running up and down the stairs. Right. So, August crochet squares. These are the mouse witch yarn ones that was the inspiration photo i'm going to hold it close so you can see the red toenails 
and these are the squares. I had to hound the poor postman, he put it all back in his van and everything. So these are the squares. So I got those done and then, pardon me, I'm so sorry, how rude, my mother would be absolutely horrified with me. Um, then I did the September ones. Now, I haven't had the Yarn Unique ones for September yet and I was panicking about that a little bit because one of our postmen is a little bit flaky and yeah things get delivered to places they should not be so I was a bit worried that my yarn had gone somewhere else and you will appreciate the thought of one's yarn being delivered to the wrong house and maybe just being put in the bin is very distressing so I checked with my friend Anne who also has the mini club and she's not had hers yet either. So the chances of both our parcels having been lost by inefficient postman is unlikely. I think that might be staying out this time, but we'll see. So September is now finished. So I'm going to show you the September ones. They are the mouse witch yarn ones because obviously the others aren't here yet. So that was the inspiration photo for September. And these are the squares. I've got the hang of displaying them now, but it's October and there's only two more months left. So let me show you together. Okay. So that was September's. I think there might be a September one left in the shop. I'm not 100% sure without double checking, but yes. While I'm on the subject of the shop, actually, I will tell you two things. Firstly, I've had to take the gradient sets out the shop for the time being because there are no minis to be had anywhere. Advent season, you see. And secondly, if you ordered the sock set, the Advent Sunday sock sets, they have been posted out. If you ordered those and the minis, they're coming separately this year. Last year I posted them all together, but this year they're coming separately. So do not panic. Um, if one gets delivered and you think I've forgotten the other one, it's coming in a couple of weeks. Let's do that. That's better. Now I can see. Okay. Crocheted squares, what's next? Apart from the Lumi Cow, which I haven't really touched, I've only really been in the mood for knitting blankets. So I'm really, really behind with my birthstone collection blankets. I'd kept up with them for six whole months up until June and then it all went to pop. So I've got two on the go. Um, Because there's a, each month, mostly, there's a variegated and a tonal, or there's what I'm calling a variegated and a tonal. So I'm doing one blanket with one and one blanket with the other. This one is the variegated blanket, and where are we? That was June, that was Pearl, this one here. So that's as far as I'd got, and I've now added July which was ruby, it's not quite that orange in real life and I am part way through adding August and I do this. Will this be my thumbnail? Highly unlikely. So this is the one I've been giving the most attention because there's no pattern for it, it's just one that I made up myself, it's just a, a mitered square with the yarn held double doesn't need a lot of thinking about just knit um 
so I've I'm part way through August I've got September's and now October's to go in there as well into both of them so very far behind and the other one oh, oh dear um this one I'm doing with the tonal um and the pattern is my favorite blanket by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears and I'm trying to wrestle the way to show it to you most easily same thing again I'd stalled at June I don't know why maybe because it was warm and I didn't want to have a big old blanket on my lap to knit while it was hot so this is knit from the corner so that was it up till June and I am literally just six or seven rows into July and again it, it's not that orangey a red in real life so that's pretty much all the knitting I've been doing I've done a very small amount on an advent blanket that I keep next to the bed I've got two of them up there actually um, but I've only been working on one because I thought at least if I could get one finished before this year's advent season starts that's like half the battle but I, I'd like to get them both finished I don't think I'm going to manage it um, and then I feel a bit like I'm strangling myself we went to the southern wall show actually that reminds me last I was going to say last week it wasn't last week it was three weeks ago I said I was going to say hello to the people I'd met at the southern wall show and that on the Saturday I'd met Tracy Kate and Sue and Sean and there was somebody else and the other person was Diane from Utri Yarncraft on the Saturday and then on the Sunday and I completely forgot that I was going to tell you that I'd met her I met a lady called Miriam who was absolutely lovely and um, I was buying the, the little striped balls from Woolies the Answer when she came to see me. I was trying to make up my mind. So, hello Miriam. I'm sorry I didn't get round to you last time. I had remembered your name but I got stalled on who else I'd seen on Saturday and of course it was Diane. And then I moved on and forgot about saying hello to you. I'm very sorry. Hello, Miriam. Please come and say hello if you see me again. I am going again next year, but I might be going on my own because um, of the date next year. I'm not sure Dave can get the time off work. I'm also going... My friend... <laughs> June asked me this morning is it going to be chaos and I went I'd like to say no but probably yes and yeah I'm also going in December there is a, a wool show in Birmingham right next door to the motorcycle museum where we've been before both to the motor my, my, my cafe yeah and there we go every episode there must be a point at which I start speaking in tongues we have been to the Motorcycle Museum before and we've also been to, it's the National Conference Centre, um, several times for doll shows. I used to make reborn dolls. Didn't collect them, still don't collect them, just used to make them. Um, so I am familiar with the venue and we're going to go to that and you will be relieved to know that we have booked our accommodation. It is a travel lodge with an accessible bathroom. Dave kept looking, we were looking at accommodation and Dave kept looking going, oh, look at this Airbnb. No, no more Airbnb, no. Travel Lodge, Premier Inn, I am not sponsored, but I need to know that there's a, a decent bathroom. Right, completely off topic. We went to the Southern Wool Show and that reminded me that at the Southern Wool Show last year, when I met Tracy and Kirsty from Wool and Wishes for the first time, 
Kirsty gave me a skein of her hand spun yarn. And I suddenly realised that a year had gone by and I hadn't used it. Let me get this off. I very cleverly... She'd made a little... Ow, 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 ow. Is this enough chaos for you, June? You didn't see the bit when I was rushing to try and get out to answer the doorbell, caught my foot in the handle of a bag and nearly face-planted the floor. You didn't see any of that. The bruise. I've got a bruise on my shin from running myself over with my own mobility scooter at the Southern Wall Show at the beginning of December, uh, September. Has almost gone. I won't be having one for Birmingham. I apparently cannot be trusted. Right. I pinched my finger in the lobster clasp. Um, Kirsty gave me... Please try and concentrate, Mandy. This hand-spun yarn. And she made this beautiful little label. And so I tied... So I want to keep the label in my, like, notebook. I tied the tie from the yarn onto the label so I've got a little bit of yarn on the label. And, honestly, this is spinning goals right here. I've cast on a hat. It's called the Thermal Cap, and I can't remember who it's by. It's by someone who does a lot of patterns, I'm sure. Well, I can't remember. All the patterns I talk about will be linked below. This is it so far. I, how gorgeous is that? The colour is just... I love it, look. This is going to be just perfect. And... I've got grey eyes, but depending what colour I wear and sometimes what mood I'm in, they look a bit green or they look a bit blue. I think this is going to make them look green. I love it. I just hope it's going to fit. I've not knit this pattern before. Um, Yes, so I cast this on. But I've also done some frogging, so... I'm down to, at the moment, 34 whips. But that will be changing shortly because, um, well, I've cast something on today that I'll tell you about in a second. And also, it is my birthday at the end of this week and I'm going to do some birthday casting on, but not what I had planned. I'm going to do something else. But again, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let me put that there. The sun's gone in again now. Okay. I'm trying to fight my brain into some sort of rational order. Right. Let's start with what I cast on today. Um, it's MCAL month. Stephen West MCAL begins on Thursday I think I'm not doing it this year or at least I'm not doing it yet it's got absolutely nothing to do with the problems last year which maybe I'm a horrible person but I actually quite enjoyed the, the kerfuffle um, I just I've got a lot of shawls and I'm not wearing them and I don't want to knit another shawl right this moment if when I see the clues come out and I see my friends are knitting on it, if I think this is something I've got to do, I have got the yarn. When I was looking for the yarn, for the thing I'm going to show you in just a second, I also kind of provisionally put aside two skeins of two colours in case I change my mind about the MCAL, because I've done so in the past. So I prepared myself... No, that's not the right one. Oh, June. In fact, I haven't got a picture. Why have I not got a picture? 
this is no oh in that case i'm just gonna have to tell you about it i was sure i'd print it out no it's not up there i don't know what i've done with it right shut up mandy Today, a different MCAL has begun. It's by a designer called Telebean Knits. It's called The Witch's Brew, and it's a cowl, a colourwork cowl. There's a clue a day for 13 days, and I'm doing that. I've done today's clue. Can't show it to you, because if any of you are doing it, I don't want to spoil it if you've, you know... I don't know, maybe you'll... Oh no, this isn't going out till tomorrow. I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you. So, if you're knitting it and you don't want to see, because you're waiting for all the clues to come out, or for whatever reason you don't want to see it, close your eyes now and I'll tell you when it's safe to look. This is just clue one. Have you closed your eyes? This is your final warning. Okay, I'm showing it now. It's gone. You needn't look it. You can look now. So that's clue one. Um, there's a clue a day, as I say, for 13 days. So even if I fall behind with it, it's not going to take me weeks and weeks to finish. When I went on to buy that pattern, which I bought a few weeks ago, when it was first announced, it was um, half price, I think. It was reduced anyway. I bought it then. But I had a look at the, the um, designer's other patterns and she did a Halloween M cowl last year and I didn't buy it until it was all finished and I bought the whole thing. Still haven't made that. But this is very all over the place. Last year in November I, I knit a shawlography. Stephen West shawlography shawl in Christmas colours and I enjoyed it so much I said I'm going to do this every year every November I'm going to knit a Christmas knit and this year this isn't <clears throat> a very good picture but this year I'm going to do this it's by the same designer her name is well, she's Telly Bean Knits, but it's Stephanie Lotvin. This is called the Stocking Stuffer Cowl. And it looks like this in half. It's folded in half, obviously. So I thought that'll be good for November. Because um, I want to knit it to wear to the wool show in December. Um, so that I'm going to cast on beginning of November. While I was looking at her patterns, I also found this. Which is a very adaptable sweater. Um, and you use a, a ball of sock yarn for the sleeves. And I had a look at that and I thought that would make quite a nice cropped sweater. For over a dress for Christmas. So... I might knit that in November as well. Scroll back now to October. My friend Nancy, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. It might calm me down, you never know. My friend Nancy, who is Kitty Scrapper, showed on her podcast um, some Halloween yarn she'd got from Hobie. And I haven't bought yarn from Hobie for years, literally, since before we left um, the EU. If you're in the States and you don't know all about Brexit, don't worry about it. But I didn't know what customs charges and what have you were going to be. So I just haven't ordered from them. And then you get out of the habit of doing something and then... I used to order from Derren Moores and Well Warehouse and now it's Well Warehouse and yeah. So I went to Hobie to look for some um, Halloween yarn 
from the same range as Nancy's but different colour. And I chose one that was orange, green, grey and black, I think. I thought, fabulous. I'm going to knit myself a, a quick sweater out of that. Um, and of course, while I was there, because it's almost obligatory, isn't it? It's got to come all the way from Denmark. I might as well give it some travelling companions. So I bought a couple of skeins of sock yarn. I've since gone back and ordered some more because, <coughs> excuse me, I got an email saying the sale ends and I just like panicked and went and bought some more sock yarn. And now I'm cross with myself because I'm not supposed to be buying any yarn and especially sock yarn because I have two big crates of it over there and I haven't knit myself any socks this year at all. But this one, I'm going to be casting on this week. I'll tell you about that later. So I bought those two. And from the same range as the Halloween yarn, I bought this. Two of these to make just a little Christmas, short-sleeved Christmas tea. I think there's enough. There is... It's 100% acrylic. There's 550 metres or 600 yards essentially in 200 grams. I've got 400 grams. It should be enough. If not, what I'll do is I'll pick out one of the colours and just do raglan sleeves in a plain colour. A bit like a, a is it a baseball t-shirt? Anyway, doesn't matter. So I'm going to use my trusty pattern for that that I use for loads of things um, but having ordered all of this I then got an email saying that the Halloween yarn was out of stock so I ended up with all this yarn and some more coming and not the yarn that I actually went there to get but never mind there's always next year so I bought that and also earlier in the year Two, three months ago um, Blue Fern Yarns I'm subscribed to their emails sent an email saying that there was a witch night box and I bought that the plan being the end of this week is my birthday and I like to have a birthday cast on and Whatever the yarn was, I was going to put it with some mohair and make a rocket tea. Well, let me show you the yarn. Blue Fern Yarns. Again, if you've ordered this but you're not opening it yet for whatever reason, look away and I will tell you when it's safe. That's just odds and ends. So, Are you looking away if you don't want to see? This is your last warning. There's one of these. I won't say in case I spoil it while you're looking away. A couple of these. There's these. And then there is, of course, the yarn. Now, you knew you were getting 200 gram skeins, and these are they. Right, I've put it all away now, you can safely look. So, I had planned I was going to cast this on, on my birthday, make a rocket tea, and happy days. But, probably because I've not been well, I've got absolutely no interest in knitting garments. I've pulled two down out of my whips, and I just don't want to cast on another one right now. I I want the Christmas one that I'm going to do in November. And I'm sure the mood will have passed by November. So that was going to be my birthday cast on. Now it's not. So what I'm going to cast on is these socks in or using the Crazy Sock Lady 
heel toe do si do just because it's a bit of interest it's a nice sort of chevrony pattern to use with self-striping yarn it's only been 34 minutes and my brain is worn out already um and it's halloweeny and i do like to spend october doing halloweeny type things i might also cast on these mitts i won this pattern i can't remember how long ago in the summer from mandy of mandy vaughan knits and it's the picture is tiny this is the front page but that's the mitt that's the other side and they're called the be creative mittens and they're by Ducathy, Katerina Duden. Again, it'll all be down below. And I'd like to cast these on as part of my birthday cast on because for my birthday, it is a significant birthday. It is a new decade and I'm not ashamed to tell you what age I'm going to be, but people always go, oh, I don't believe it. And it makes me all feel a bit weird. I'm going to be 60 at the end of this week and for my birthday Peter and Lauren are buying me a tattoo so I'm going to have a B tattooed to go with my memorial tattoo for my mum and our dog. Yes you heard that right this is a memorial tattoo for my mother and my dog. Neither of them would have minded being lumped in together. The peonies, because um, I chose peonies for the tribute to go on the top of her coffin, and the daisies, because the dog was called Maisie Daisy. So I'm going to have a little bee, a little buzzy bee, because Peter and I both love bees. And he said, would you like a tattoo? I should explain, we're getting matching tattoos. I know, how twee. And lots of you out there do not approve of tattoos and body modification, I'm sure. And that's fine because you're entitled to that and I'm entitled to this. So we're not going to argue about it. But Peter is getting a little bee and so am I. So I want to cast on the mittens as well. And then for something that's just going to be easy, not worry about it, I want to cast on a hat. And I've immediately forgotten the name of the hat. I'll put it on the screen and I'm going to cast it on with one of my Halloween colourways from last year, Held Double. And if I really, really like it, I might cast it on again with one of my Halloween colourways from this year. It depends how quickly I get on. Anyway. That's all the planning the planning I've yeah. all the casting on planning that I've got going but I've also pulled out some things because I'm feeling a bit guilty so this was my birthday cast on from last year it's called the Salt Marsh Cove and I'm going to be working on this as well what I'm planning to do let me try and get this into some kind of sensible thing to tell you. What I'm planning to do is, through October, work on, obviously, the MCAL. Um, my, hello, my, my birthday cast-ons and some things from last year that were from this time of year last year. So this is my birthday cast-on from last year. And I'm fairly confident I can get this finished because... I'm, I'm I'm down below. I've divided for the sleeves. It's just round and round. It's um, DK. It's knit on... Did I tell you it was called the Salt Marsh Cove? It's on 3.75mm needles. Do you like my bats? Um, I think I can get this finished. I would like to, anyway. 
Sorry, I just had a thought then that I could do this cropped and then it would be finished really soon. No, Mandy, that's naughty. Don't cheat. Um, and then I pulled out two pairs of socks as well that I cast on. Did I have a Halloween sock knitting thing last year? Honestly, don't remember. No, it was Woolen Wishes. I cast it on for them on for Woolen Wishes. Um, they did a hands and feet knit along. I remember now. This sock is the colour palette socks. What is going on? Oh, it's because that's through there. I've forgotten how DPNs work, obviously. This is the colour palette socks. These are knit in. That is my own colourway fade to grey. And the orange, I think, is pumpkin. Cascade Heritage Pumpkin. Let me see. Yes, 5646. Six. And that's as much as I've got. So I've got the foot to do and the other sock, obviously. I'll have to see what I was doing with them. It doesn't look like I've changed needle. Last year I was knitting my socks, the leg on a 2.75. And then going back down to my ordinary needle for the foot because my ankles were swelling so badly with the messing about my heart was doing. Here we are. Colour palette socks by Laurel Knits. That's what they should look like. I'm doing a Halloween version. Um, so I'm going to knit those. What size needles have I got in there? I might have done, you know, because I've got 2.75s in there. I bet I've not written in the pattern what I've done. Why do we do this? Well, I'm assuming everybody does it. I know some people do it. Why do we, like, abandon projects and then come back to them and not have a clue about what we were doing? And it's not the first time I've done it either. You'd think I'd learn, wouldn't you? But apparently not. So I pulled those out and I've also pulled... Again, these were cast on about this time last year. I think I did get these out earlier in the year and show them to you. Because I've changed changed what I was doing. This is just a vanilla pair that I'm knitting to my own vanilla recipe. And... I think I may have changed needles on this one but this is in an old well last year's colourway it's called witch something what is it called it's my own colourway you'd think I'd remember wouldn't you which something which something which I don't remember does it matter probably not and just some lime green that I dyed up as contrast what were they called this is so annoying I bet like my friends are saying it's called such and such I re-released it this year as well. The other one was called Trick or Treat and I haven't got that out to show you and that's the one that I'm going to use for the hat. It'll come to me. It'll come to me after I've finished recording. It doesn't really matter. I know it's called Witch Something. Was it Witch's Brew? Or am I just thinking that because of the blue fern yarns thing? You do not need to see me sit here for five minutes trying to remember something that I've clearly stored away 
in the filing cabinet that is my brain. And I think that's everything. I think that is everything knitting related. 45 minutes and I've done no knitting to show you, but I've still managed to talk to you for 45 minutes. Or should I say talk at you for 45 minutes? Let me check. Let me check. Yeah, that's everything. Right, so thank you for bearing with me. I'm sorry I'm a bit of a basket case. I'm obviously not as better as I thought I was. Um, It is nine, now, now, blah, blah, three times, three times this week. It is now time for me to tell you about the shop update, which is happening on Sunday. What time on Sunday? Nobody knows, not even me. I'll try and remember and do it first thing in the morning because we are going out for lunch. So there's every possibility that I will forget because I will have a nice lunch, come home, have a nap and forget all about it. There's something exciting I must tell you. Maybe I'll save it for next week. I'm going to save it for next week. Right, shop update. Excuse me, getting right up in in your face again. So, let's start with the Mystery Mini Club for October. Do you see the colours? Now, don't be put off this by thinking it's all orange. It's not. That's all I'm saying. So, Mystery Mini Club. Then the birthstone collection, October, depending what list you look at, October is opal or rose quartz. Most, most of the time, most of the charts will tell you that's what it is. Now, I am an October baby. I am a Libra. Librans are notorious for not being able to make up their minds. So I spent several weeks trying to decide whether I was going to do opal or rose quartz and in the end I did them both because it was just the simplest way to go. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. The light is absolutely awful as usual and this is a very very subtle colourway. This is opal. Oh I think you can just about see in there it is a tonal peachy kind of like the colour of an opal um, like the background colour of an opal so yeah it's really not coming out very well I would try and put a photograph in but I couldn't photograph it very well either I took loads of close-ups but I'm not sure that that helped very much I have got some mohair that's almost the exact same colour as this and that will be a rocket tea. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to suit me, it's a bit pale colour but yeah some of this and that will look really pretty even if not on me. Um, and then the rose quartz is just, uh, this is the variegated or will be listed as the variegated me remove that ginger hair don't know where that's come from um yeah so it's a pink that fades to a very very pale white those are the birthstone ones and then because i could not help myself there is another halloween colorway it is the last one for this year and I dyed some of this up to give to my friends as gifts at the Southern Wool Show, some of them. Those would, that would appreciate its gloominess. This is Fright Night. And again, I don't think you're really seeing it to its best advantage. Because the light, I've got the top light on to try and get some, maybe that's better. So that's Fright Night. It's kind of navies and brown and 
dare I say it, beige. Um, yeah. And then there's more. And these are going to be really hard to see, I suspect. And also crinkly. I wanted to do some sock sets and so I did. These are very limited numbers. Some are already gone because the um, members, Kofi membership on my page is a bit like Patreon and they one of the, the perks is you get a week before the shop update, you get a first look. Um, there are four colourways um, and they are a mixture of bases. So there are 50 gram and a 20 gram skein. The 50 gram is 85.25, the 20 gram is 75, no, 85.15, the 20 gram is 75.25. My reasoning being, if you're gonna make socks with them, you'll probably use this for toes and heels and that's where you need a bit of extra strength. So this set is called Pumpkin. And this is my favourite, obviously. This set is called Pink Pumpkin. Then there's Wood Witch. It was going to be Witch of the Woods, but I had to keep writing it out and it was just too long. So it's now Wood Witch. So it's kind of a foresty vibe. And finally, jack-o'-lantern, which it's not really coming out on the camera. This is quite neon, or oh, that might be a bit better, apart from the glare. So that jack-o'-lantern, this is my second favourite. So I think that's everything. Let me check my list because, yes. That is everything. Almost an hour again for how much knitting did I do? About 10 rows in two weeks and I've talked at you for an hour. I bet my coffee's cold now as well. So that's everything. I'm going to go. I need to drink my coffee. My throat has dried out. I'm very thirsty. Um, Ewan is waiting to play records downstairs, which he's going to do very loud, which I don't mind, but I don't want to get banned from YouTube because you can hear copyrighted music. So he needs to go out later and I need to shut up so that he can play his music. I'm so sorry about the light. The sun is going to come out again any second. It's just at the edge of a very dark cloud. Here it comes. No. There we go. We'll just sit in the dark, shall we? Um, I will link below my friend Belinda's podcast because she is having, and I meant to tell you this when I was talking about casting on uh, the socks and the hat, she is having a, oh, I think it's called a fall, Falloween knit along, um, which I'm hoping to enter with my socks and my hat. I think, if I remember rightly, the rules are anything that's sort of fall or Halloween adjacent. But I'll link her podcast below so you can go and check that. There was something else I was going to put below. It'll probably come to me. Um, and I will see you next week, where I promise to try and be a bit a little bit less all over the place and have less stuff to show you but something very exciting to talk to you about hopefully birthday related not podcast or knitting related or is it not really podcast related it's birthday related i'll tell you about it next week okay so, I'll see you next week when I will be 60 years old and, uh, yeah. 
I don't mind actually. You know, people have like a midlife crisis and a bit of a meltdown when they turn 40. For me, it was turning 30. And since I turned 30, I've been absolutely fine. I didn't mind 40 or 50. And I honestly don't mind 60. I just can't believe that I'm going to be 60. Because when I started work, women retired at 60. So technically, by Monday, I will be, or would have been, a pensioner. And... I can't tie that into this. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm feeling a bit weirded out about it. I have to keep telling people that I'm nearly 60, so I, I try and believe it myself. Right. I'm going to shut up now. And I will see you next week. Until then, happy knitting. If you are in an area that's been um, affected by these absolutely awful weather conditions that are going on in any area of the world, I hope you're safe. I hope everything's OK. And yeah, just just look after yourselves. Things are just things, but people can't be replaced. So just take care of yourselves. And yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.